Today we're going to explore CoreLogic's Remote Query. CoreLogic's Remote Query allows customers to send data to an archive, which is object storage in their own cloud account, whether it's GCP or AWS or Azure, and then it can be queried directly from the CoreLogic's UI without the need to ever index that data. This represents an enormous potential for cost saving because now your working data set can be huge. And there's no need to re-index that data if you want to keep accessing it. You can simply query it directly all the time. So with different use cases, with another feature called the TC Optimizer, you're able to push your data down different pipelines and understand uh, that it'll never be indexed at the end of that process. This is a huge potential for cost saving. It's also really, really powerful because it because it opens up so much data, it opens up huge historical analysis potential, as well as holding onto data for a really long time for things like audit and compliance purposes. It comes at no extra cost, so you do not get charged per query. You don't get charged for attention on the CoreLogic side. You only pay for two things. One, the initial point of ingestion, which comes at an 85% discount if you ingest in the compliance use case. Otherwise, you'll pay different ingestion rates for different use cases. And the, uh, the retention in your cloud object storage. So this is just, for example, in F3, you may pay uh, less than two cents per gigabyte. Like it's, it's a fraction of the cost of almost any SaaS provider's retention rates. This means that you get the, kind of get the best of both worlds. You get a really, really cheap retention rate. So you can hold some data in, for example, Amazon S3, but you can still query it directly from the CoreLogix archive as if that data were held in CoreLogix. And also that data is held in an open source format. What this means is that if you want to issue queries from uh, AWS Athena, for example, um, you can, there's nothing stopping you. So you completely own your data. It's in your account in a format that you can access without the need to come to us and ask us anything. The final unique point that I want to highlight here is that um, this completely eliminates the need for customers to pay for the retention on the SaaS side. Um, so this is a really, really common problem. Uh, rather than, and what this essentially does is turns these SaaS vendors into expensive Amazon resellers or expensive cloud resellers because their storage is constantly, it, it's going to be sold at a markup. Retention is basically just holding it anyway. So rather than paying somebody else at a markup to do it for you, just hold it in your own cloud storage, in your own uh, account, pay the bo rock bottom rates, get access to the discounts available in your account and the intelligent tiering, for example, uh, that allows you to be more optimally organize your data. So you get huge potential for cost savings that go well beyond just your SaaS subscription bill. Um, and all by giving access to the data with schema on read uh, via data prime, uh, which we'll show you soon, and schema on write via the parsing rules uh, when the data is actually ingested into CoreLogix. So the course of this video, we're gonna take a look at um, how to actually activate uh, archive query mode, uh, how to issue queries, uh, we're going to go through some best practices for how to design your queries, and also how you might want to think about your data when it arrives in your archive, so to make sure that you get the right labels on there, the right values, um, and then we're also going to look at some of the prerequisites as well to make sure that you have your archive in place in your appropriate cloud storage. So let's get started. Before we begin discussing archive query in the CoreLogix platform, I just want to explain the need for the archive in the first place. So before you can query your archive, of course, you, you require an archive uh, as part of your CoreLogix account. Setting up your archive is really easy, but it's really important to remember you need to be admin level, uh, have admin level permissions in your CoreLogix account in order to do this. If you don't have admin level permissions, you won't see any of these options on the screen. So if, if you have far fewer options in this menu, you are not an admin. You'll need to find an admin in order to do this. You'll see the setup archive option here. You click on this and you can see that you can configure your buckets in here. The documentation is really, really clear. So just follow it step by step. There's a bunch of different options uh, using CloudFormation, Terraform, um, as well as explaining for different cloud providers as well. So it's really straightforward to do. Um, so you can see on the left-hand side, you have one for CX data. This is your log data, and this is what you have one for metrics. I would recommend uh, setting up both because then everything's going to work really easily and really cleanly. Um, but just remember that um, the best thing to do is to have all this set up before you uh, begin with the sort of rest of this video so you can do it interactively. And remember that you have to be an admin in order to uh, really get the benefit out of this. Let's explore the interface uh, here. So now we're in the, the typical log explore screen. The way to arrive at that is explore and then logs from the dashboard. Um, you'll see here that in the top left, we have two options here, logs and archive. So the current mode we're in right now is accessing what we call our frequent search logs. So these are the logs that you access all the time. The idea of your frequent search logs is that they're indexed, they're easily accessible. Every possible feature is available to these logs. Now, if you want to switch to archive mode, it's really easy. Just hit this button. You are now in archive mode and it'll instantly issue a query. You see how fast that is? That was 70,000 documents going to cloud storage, again, in your own account, 
and coming back to us. Now you may find that this is grayed out and you have no ability to switch between logs and archive. This is an indication that you haven't set up your cloud storage archive bucket. Now the way to do that is in data flow and then set up archive. You open up set up archive, you'll see your options here for configuring your CX data bucket. So you can see your options here, just simply follow the tutorial. This example gives you S3. Um, you follow the tutorial, set these up, and this will enable you to set up your archive, at which point that should, uh, that should enable the archive switch available in the logs view. Now when you do switch to archive mode, you'll notice a few things. Um, your logs will load here, and if you look at the top search bar here, you still have filters on the left-hand side. Um, you can still issue queries in either Lucene or in Data Prime. So in Lucene, for example, um, you could say um, uh, anything coming from uh, EU uh, West 1. So the way you would do that would be you would look for the region. So AWS region, there you go. Uh, EU West 1. Let me issue that query. Now notice this is a nice key value pair query here. What you'll find is this is very fast. So we just loaded our logs there really, really quickly. What this has enabled you to do is to load a huge amount of data very quickly so we can actually expand this quite quite extensively. So this is a 24 hour query. Bear in mind this is coming all the way from cloud storage in your account. This isn't indexed data and there's still no need to re-index this data. This isn't being indexed. So there's 40,000 queried over the last 24 hours and we can expand that further if we really want to. But you'll notice this is really performed because it's a key value query and that's tip number one is include the key value pairs and try and avoid doing too much transformation and things like that on the, on the query because that will mean that your queries perform really, really nicely, it lowers the compute load, it makes things much, much easier for you. Um, you can also issue a similar query into Data Prime. So you can see actually the comparable query here in Data Prime. So in Data Prime, you source the logs, you simply filter on AWS region. Once again, you can issue that query that will compile and run, and the same data appears. So this is all running against the same data, it's just a really, really nice way of solving that problem. So you, we've seen here an example of both uh, Lucene and an example of Data Prime querying here. Now, there's a common problem here, people aren't familiar with Data Prime. Click the cheat sheet here, and you get a really nice breakdown of all the functionality, as long as tutorials for the actual syntax and how to construct your Data Prime queries. Data Prime is remarkable uh, for really, really nice functionality around um, transforming and keeping a really scalable, really clean uh, way of querying this data. So it's really nice for performing data transformations and aggregations as well. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. Of course, you can also um, perform sort of schema on read transformations as well with Data Prime. Prime. It's not something that's available with Lucene. So this is a really, really nice um, option for you to actually um, dig into the, uh, the functionality there in Data Prime. It's fast, very, very fast. In fact, Data Prime queries issued against your archive will run roughly five times faster than Athena or up to five times faster than Athena. Um, so really, really powerful, really, really straightforward. So we've covered some of the best practices for how to query, focus on key value pairs. Again, avoid uh, things like free text search as well. So in Lucene, you could do something like this if you wanted to, like this, and run that. There you go. Um, so it's going to run a slow query. It takes a very, very long time. It's 10 times faster to issue a, a slow, uh, this, uh, to, to issue a key value pair query. So just, I would consider strongly um, avoiding running these kinds of queries just because it takes a really long time. It's not a very efficient use of your data. I'd also, again, avoid using the, avoid, avoid the aggregations and the really sort of clever uh, transformations if you can. Instead, focus on the format that the data is in when it goes into your archive. So you can perform transformations and processing on the data to enrich the data and transform and parse it in different ways. I would focus more on that if I were you, um, rather than the um, implementation of like different aggregation functions here. Again, just to keep queries nice and fast. So keep that data clean. It's going to make sure it scales really well. It's going to run really nicely. So after this, we're just going to dig into some of the uh, common problems that people experience with this um, and some of the things that you might find uh, if you are having trouble and some of the easy solutions that you can come up with. Let's explore writing high performance queries in the archive query mode in CoreLogix. Archive Query is immensely powerful, but there are some ways to really take advantage of the way it's built and the way it works. So the first thing um, I would do is avoid uh, free text searches. So what are free text searches? If I just put US, US East 2A in here, for example, this is what's called a free text search. And what it will do is it will look for this text in all of the keys and all of the documents in the time range. And if I click search here, you'll even get a warning explaining to you that this is 10, almost 10 times slower. Uh, doing this. So really, I would strongly recommend avoiding the free text search. Um, you don't really get any benefit out of it because 
nine times out of ten um, you might find that this matches other things that you didn't intend in the first place it's much much better to actually look for the key that you're interested in and then filter for that for example i can see availability zone here and i can see us east 2b i can get rid of my us east 2e 2a query i can just include that in the query here and i have a key value match and this this will be this is much much more efficient it's nice and fast I remember this is coming straight from S3 and there's 29,000 documents have been loaded almost instantly. So cloud availability zone there, use key value pair queries. They are by far the fastest. The second piece of advice I can give you is um, make sure that you make good use of the filters on the left hand side. So um, you can see application, subsystem and severity. Make sure that if you don't, if you don't care about the, um, for example, logs uh, for, for all the applications, you only care about front end, then then only look for the front end logs, you know, um, and don't make don't make the query have to do more work than it needs to do. This is another way. It's, it's like querying a database. You avoid scanning unnecessary documents or rows. Exactly the same principle here. So uh, really simple. Just uh, use the filter on the left hand side. Um, so so far, we've covered free value, uh, free text searches to avoid them completely. It's the same with regex uh, searches as well. So generally speaking, try to make everything as key value match as possible. Now, there are times when your log, as it's ingested, may not necessarily have um, the key uh, and value pair that you're really interested in. What you can do is rather than doing some sort of um, calculation to work everything out or some sort of aggregation uh, on every single query, which again will add time because it's doing more processing. And what you can do is just use another part of the um, CoreLogix platform, which is the data under data flow and parsing rules. What you can do here is you can actually generate new fields, you can uh, perform the calculations up front and extract them out into new fields in the logs. And then when they're archived, those fields are still there and they're present. And what that means is that rather than having to constantly calculate new values every single query, instead of that, you just query that you just query the key value pair up front. This is a way of like massaging your logs a little bit so that they're in the perfect right shape for you to query. So definitely, definitely, there are lots and lots of different ways of avoiding these really complex uh, queries that add unnecessary latency to queries and, and uh, the parsing rules is definitely one that you should 100% look into and um, they're really, really powerful and it, again it just means that your data is prepared for the kinds of queries you want it's just good data management the final tip i would offer just be aware of this um time span here if you're only interested in in logs between a certain um time frame then you can pick a date and time frame here you can pick the actual exact window you're interested in the smaller the window you can make it of course the smaller the data set the engine has to go through and therefore the faster your query time so really just make use of time frames to make sure that you're querying the exact data you need everything is all about uh, two two factors is lowering the amount of data that's being scanned in the first place by the query and lowering the amount of processing required once that data has been found so avoiding free text searches, for example, means that you have to f you scan fewer keys. Uh, of, um, uh, going for key value pairs means you only really focus on one uh, key. Using the filters on the left-hand side will minimize the amount of uh, logs that the application has to go through. Same thing with time range as well, just minimize that data set. So whenever you're writing these queries, think of the two rules. Am I doing the least possible amount of processing in the query? And am I scanning the, the smallest possible volume of data to make sure I'm writing the fastest query? And am I really leveraging the power of parsing rules and the rest of the uh, CoreLogix application to make sure that my logs are in the perfect right state to be queried um, right then and there? So just um, investigate that, uh, have a look at the different features there. It's really, really important that you get a really good grasp of ways of using the CoreLogix platform in a really high performance way. So let's explore just some of the big common problems that people find when they're using this kind of solution. And number one is they'll notice it looks a bit like this. So logs and archive are grayed out. You'll see here an indication as to why you haven't set up your remote archive. So as we said at the beginning of this video, really straightforward, data flow, set up archive. Um, once that's set up, it will look something more like this, where you can switch freely between the two modes. Um, but if you do see this, it's almost certain that you um, haven't set up your archive. If you have set up your archive and you're still seeing this and data is flowing, then be sure to use the support button to make sure we understand exactly what's going on. We'll probably be able to help you. Um, the second thing is that um, you are unable to find logs in the archive. So for example, it's been a month, it's been two months, and those logs just aren't, aren't appearing in your archive anymore. So 
what you can do when you set up your archive is you can actually set up these retention tags. So retention tags are labels that get attached to your data and they inform your cloud storage, okay, um, you should hold this for a week, four weeks, whatever. The actual values of these tags are completely up to you and the configuration of when that data is deleted is also up to you. All this is a way of doing is labeling your data. However, if your data, you notice your data is going missing from your, your archive bucket, the chances are that what you're seeing is um, is a tidy up or the life cycle of that data is coming to an end. And so I would check the retention tags that you've got and how they correspond to your cleanup of your data. It could be possible they're just releasing, uh, just reaching the end of their uh, TTL. And so make sure that you uh, understand exactly how long you're retaining the data for in your bucket, because that is like the number one cause for why people uh, are unable to find their data. Lastly, um, the most common question that we get is, I, I really like to get started with Data Prime, uh, but uh, I don't know where to begin. Um, so look, the, the, it couldn't be easier. Click on the Lucene thing to bring up Data Prime and then bring up the cheat sheet. And this has got a full documentation of everything you could possibly need to get started. Um, there are videos on YouTube, there are um, a myriad of different resources available, documentation on the website and more. So have a look at that. Um, and again, if you get stuck with a data prime query, if you get stuck with any of this, feel free just to click the button down here and load our support chat. And we're more than happy to get involved and help out. So um, that was just some of the, the common problems that people run into uh, with archive query. And this will enable you to um, sort of move forward with confidence, avoid some of those common pitfalls. And yeah, I'd strongly recommend you try out data prime alongside this because the analytical power of data prime plus the speed and scalability of archive query and the, the um, incumbent uh, cloud storage that sits behind it is remarkable. And it completely changes how you do historical, historical analysis, how you respond to audit requests and more. So uh, hopefully this video has been useful to you and thank you very much for watching. Find out more at the documentation site, uh, chronologics.com or at the other videos we've got on our YouTube channel that will explain in detail um, various different aspects of the Chronologics platform.